All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to a little mini four-part mini-series I'm going to do in regards to yesterday's video, because I was going to do it in a full kind of one length video and kind of do topics or even create chapters within the video but i feel like each individual topic needs their own video so this one is going to be about the fuels that we're getting introduced which is going to involve rocket fuel and the ionized fuel and then we're going to do another video on the quality of life stuff uh, on the new buildables and then on the new uh, metal textures we get to paint another one on the summer sloops and then another one on the mercy spheres and i think that's going to be the best way to kind of juggle it so maybe there's going to be two videos today two videos on sunday which will be tomorrow kind of break them down a little bit further than what snot explained yesterday and I can give you more some more accurate numbers and uh we've had something that we We've had a while which is turbo fuel and that's what we're going to get on top of today and touch base on a couple of things and how that can benefit your factory so as we know we have two new fuels we have the rocket fuel and the ionized fuel i am looking at my notes i've had to write a couple of things down i don't normally do this because i normally wing it but with the amount of information we've received i'm like oh boy okay let's bring out the notepad so rocket fuel and ionized fuel rocket fuel is the the first step or the second step after turbo fuel so you do need turbo fuel to have it and to unlock turbo fuel if you've never done it before is if we go into my little test world here and we head over to the sulfur it is actually this branch right here so you need to unlock the experimental power generation you also need the the compacted coal and also the turbo fuel so the turbo fuel comes in two forms which is liquid form which is obviously for pipes and you can also package and unpackage it in the packager right so in regards to the turbo fuel as you can see i've got a little tiny mini setup set up right here and we have a storage container right here which is outputting the turbo package so very very similar if it was to import it anywhere where it then gets emptied in here and makes a byproduct of empty canisters the canisters then come back around into this storage container just for this little demonstration but the turbo fuel comes into this pipe and then goes into the fuel generator and then in the fuel generator we can see that it's burning turbo fuel at 4.5 cubic meters per minute and then if we open my calculator here and we go in 600 so that's a mark 2 pipe at full capacity of turbo fuel divide that by 4.5 that's going to be 133.33 fuel generators that you're going to need to consume a 600 line so 4.5 is the turbo fuel cubic meter burn rate but as you know in yesterday's video snup mentioned that it burns at i believe 4.17 cubic meters which is a bit of an odd number it'll have a burn rate of 4.167 cubic meters uh, and i've done the maths of that and that will work out at 143.88 fuel generators which will make you a total of 35,970 megawatts and the reason that's a little bit higher than normal because it has also been confirmed that fuel generators will now output 250 megawatts where in the current version of the game so before full release it only outputs 150 megawatts which does mean we are now getting more power for our consumption, basically. One change we've made to fuel generators is that they will now produce 250 megawatts of power instead of the current 150 megawatts. But take into consideration that fuel has also changed. Your normal standard fuel that you will make uh, in your refineries or in your blenders, uh, the orange one, this has now gone up to 20 instead of 12. So you are burning 20 cubic meters of fuel instead of 12, where normally the 12 can fit in a good number of 50 generators. So let me just double check this. So that's going to be 600 fuel in a line. Divide that by 12 is currently 50. Divide that by 20 instead is going to be 30 fuel gens. And then if you was to times that by 250, that's going to be 7,500 megawatts in 1.0. So there is a lot of changes coming to power and that obviously involves a summer sloop which will be in a separate video so rocket fuel burns at a rate of 4.17 cubic meters that goes into 143.88 fuel gens which then outputs and gives us a total power of 35,970. It can also be used in the jetpack which gives us a very very launch um, boost uh, when used uh, but it is highly recommended that we use a parachute but unfortunately we only have one back slot which then does mean we can't use the jetpack and the parachute at the same time without doing a mid-earth switch 
So if you don't know what I mean, let's say, for example, I'm currently flying, I'm using my new fuel, and then I suddenly run out, I then am in a bit of a trouble. So I then have to go into my inventory, switch to it, and then activate my parachute, which is a little bit of a pain, I understand. You have to be a, li a little bit quick-fingered, uh, um, but that's the only way we can do it. It would have been nice if there was a maybe a parachute slot to maybe fix this, but who knows, that will get adjusted after 1.0. Or it could well be just a skill issue. <laughs> so to make this, we actually need to use turbo fuel and nitric acid into the blender, which will also give you a byproduct of compact coal. And if you're familiar with the turbo fuel recipe, you can use compact coal that you are being made that's being made as a byproduct in rocket fuel to loop back around into making more turbo fuel. So you can be smart about it, or you can even take that compacted coal, and who knows, because of the new diamonds we have in game, uh, in 1.0, and we know coal goes into a particle accelerator to make diamonds, who says there's not an alternate recipe that uses compact coal to make diamonds? And then next up, uh, has Snut said, the bigger brother, uh, the next stage or final form of this fuel is called ionized fuel. And that is made in the refinery with a power shard, which we can now make in the quantum encoder. Um, and we need to put the rocket fuel in there to make ionized fuel, which has a burn rate of three cubic meters per minute. So that works out at a very easy number of 200 fuel gens per Mark II pipe, which will give us 50,000 megawatts. And then of course he stated that the jetpack is, does have the thrust, it has more speed and more control in the air, so which I'm super curious about because I'm a lover of, you know, having the biofuel jetpack just because of how long it can last. Because if we look at the turbo fuel, we can see how high we get. And obviously it does give us some speed if we are going in a horizontal line. But if I click this little icon here and switch over to the package fuel, and then I go up, you can see the difference. So yes, it's a little bit slower, but you do have a lot more endurance. Uh, and I prefer this because if you utilize this with the, the likes of your trains, for example, you can use trains as a form of slingshot and get yourself from one side of the map to the other. And obviously, if you've tuned into the live streams, you'll have seen me do that multiple times because a lot of you is why, why are you not using the hyper cannons? And that's mainly the reason. So if we actually go to the trailer in regards to the toilet flush, there's actually an item we spotted early on, which was this item right here in this shot, which these, you can see there's some canisters, which we already know what the uh, packaged rocket fuel looks like because we see that going into the drone port, which you can see right here. So I'm going out on a limb here. I'm going to guess that this one is the packaged ionized fuel, or it could be something totally different, but I'm pretty sure this is the packaged ionized fuel. So I went through the little packaged fuel section in that previous teaser, and I didn't see any of the other ones. I could have been blind, so if I do miss one, just let me know in the uh, thing. It's currently like half five in the morning. I've literally got up about half an hour ago, and I need to crack on with my day because I've got a busy one today. And then obviously, speaking of drones, we now have the option to use other fuels inside the drone port and to power our drones and not just batteries anymore. Drones now can use most fuel types in the game. So drones are no longer like exclusively for batteries. They can also take advantage of many of the different fuel types that you can package. Which is such a relief because we don't just have to keep relying on sulfur to make batteries. And even though we've got sulfur, batteries has always been a little choke point in regards to most people's factories because we kind of needed the sulfur for like nuclear builds and all this kind of stuff. So having what we have now is going to reduce the amount of batteries we need. Yes, we're still going to need some, but it also reduces the plastic and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm super happy that we can now do that. But not just that, it also allows the drones to fly at different uh, speeds. They also fly differently depending on what fuel type they're in. So like the better the fuel type, the faster the drones will fly. Which will help with throughput or maybe even control your logistics and throughput depending on how you would want it to be delivered. So if you want to be something to deliver at a slower rate, you would use a slow burning fuel, where if you want something that requires it to get some air to be super quick as possible, you're going to more than likely want to go down the rocket fuel branch and the ionized oxide fuel branch. So I'm, uh, 
I'm super happy with these changes and hopefully that kind of clears things up in regards to some fuel. And again, thank you so much for your love and support that you provide me as a creator, but not just me, but showing each other some awesome, awesome love as well. So thank you so much for watching. As always, keep smiling and I'll see you in another video.